from the upgrade. The boys have managed to create a world that, while quite similar to most other superhero worlds, is quite the opposite. It feels like a satirical version of the world and the superhero stories we've read since childhood. However, they don't make a hollow interpretation because there's an explanation for everything you witness in this show. Each of the elements of the story is tied together, and there's a lot of dirt on every aspect of the superheroes in the show, called the soups. Now, a brilliant aspect of the show was how it managed to show that all these soups were products of experimentation, and this just proved that there are more prominent villains at work than the soups themselves. Let's explore the soups and the various questions surrounding them from the boys. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Deal's off. <laughs> How were soups created? The origin of the concept of superheroes, or as the characters from the boys would call them, soups, was associated with super soldier projects. But this time, the super soldiers were not being created for the Americans, like in the case of Captain America. Soups were made so that they could serve as soldiers for Nazi Germany during the Second World War. Even though that was the original plan regarding these beings, they currently have some superhero celebrities in America. But that's not all. They also work in law enforcement at times, but under the control of certain authorities who manage their behavior to give them an outlook that ensures a powerful presentation. Even though it might seem bizarre that the origin of the concept of the soups is a parody of the Marvel version of Super Soldier experiments, the case becomes clear when we look at the character of Stormfront, who appeared as one of the significant characters in the series throughout the second season. Later, it turned out that her real name was Clara, the wife of the German geneticist Frederick Vaught, who created Compound V. Clara was the very first of the soups to be made under the Nazi regime. Yeah, we all witnessed how Vaught International tried to cover up the entire soups associated with the Nazi thing in the third season. But now we come to Vought International, a company that continues to create, market, and capitalize on the superhumans. They administered the Compound V to children across the country, and all the parents were given money so that they would allow their kids to be experimented upon. The soups themselves don't know about this because they're given some sort of fabricated narrative regarding their powers and family in comparison to what happened to them. Luckily, this entire thing about people being born while being blessed with powers was shattered when superhuman terrorists popped up across the globe. Later, the Compound V was leaked, and it became apparent that these superhuman individuals were experimented upon by Vought International, and they did not have any proper origin story. Do soups physically consume Compound V? The fact that the superheroes are created takes us to a whole new field of questions regarding the superhumans and their Compound V intake. Consuming these drugs is not a regular thing, since individuals do not regularly take these drugs to keep their superhuman abilities. Compound V is present in these being circulatory systems, which allows them to exhibit their superpowers. But this very factor takes a unique turn where, later on, a means was developed to enable the superhuman to remain permanently enhanced. In the Gen V spinoff series, we witness Golden Boy Boy being made into a more powerful soup by injecting him with the Compound V infused blood of his sibling Sam to create an ideal student for the university. Dr. Cardosa, a genius who figured out how to ensure that superhumans were permanently powerful, conducted this experiment. Yes, The Boys takes the satirical theme towards the superheroes ideally and allows for many real world issues to be referenced using this theme. Jesus. How Compound V works on an infant and a grown man. Now, there's a particular reason why Compound V is not administered to adults, even though that might make sense for gaining foot soldiers. Compound V shows ideal outcomes when administered to infants, but simultaneously poses a threat if given to adults. The babies who are experimented upon are selected by particular doctors who are under the contract of Vought International. We did get to see this arc being explored, where we found out that confident kids are chosen to be administered the drug, and there's a vast racial difference in the kids, which directly connects to the Nazi origins of this program. It was discovered that the children selected for the program are primarily Caucasian, with a slight number of them being black or Asian. During the very first season of the show, we saw Billy Butcher call Compound 5 a drug very similar to steroids. It manages to boost the powers of the individual who consume, and often some of these beings are seen overdosing on it, and it does have some crazy side effects. Fans of the show might remember Popclaw and A-Train, and how regular consumption had some adverse impact on A-Train. The show then brought in the exciting 
concept of the V24, a rendition of the original compound that allows people to have powers momentarily. The third season brought this, and we witnessed Billy Butcher and Huey take these drugs, to gain certain powers that allowed them to go against Soldier Boy and Homelander. Even though the comic books had brought in the idea that our group of humans had powers from the beginning, the show took its time to give these characters a level playing field against the crazy soups. These moments from the show were pretty cool, but they proved to have some adverse side effects when it came to the individuals who were taking these drugs. Billy started having withdrawal syndrome after taking the drugs as his heat vision, one of the powers he got due to the drug, lingered a lot longer than the 24 hours that the drug effects were supposed to stick around for. Not only that, but it seemed the evil elements in the persona of the soups could be a side effect of the drugs too, because we saw how V24 ended up bringing out the worst when it came to Billy. He killed Gunpowder quite ruthlessly, and at the same time, he ended up severing his relationship with his son. We haven't seen the arc of adults being experimented upon with Compound V yet, but then the drug is costly, about $19 billion for a single dose. Is there any gesture or physical requirement needed to activate their powers? Fans of the superhero characters might be aware of the mutants from X-Men, and how their powers take time to settle in. There are narratives where we see that the mutants discovered their powers quite randomly, which would often lead to some crazy outcome and prove to be hostile to the people around them. Most of the mutants ended up killing their parents when their powers took effect for the very first time. Later, they would reach Professor Xavier, who helped them gain control of their power and use it to achieve a particular goal. This arc probably needs to be added in the boys even though the individuals randomly discover their powers. Remember what happened to Marie Moreau and her family when she first discovered her powers as she got her first period? The same can be said for many other characters in The Boys. But then we're left wondering if there's a sure thing that pulls them, or an instinct that drives them to use their power for the first time. After all, Peter Parker is standing on a roof and trying different gestures to release webbing from his hand. It looks fantastic, but it's unrealistic. The only insight we have regarding this is when Huey was talking to Starlight about how he knew his powers when he took the V24 compound. He had the intuition regarding his powers, and he was also able to clinch his butt in to take the teleporting jump. This event indicates that the other soups might also know their powers and how to activate them based on the requirement. However, this intuition might come without considering the disadvantages of power utilization on the individual. Remember when Huey took the drug and did his first teleportation, only to realize that the jumps caused him to lose his clothes? If only he knew Edna, she would design the perfect costume so he wouldn't lose his clothes while undergoing teleportation. Does age matter to manifest soup's abilities? Sometimes the reaction to the drug takes place right away, as the children might experience superhuman abilities right away. However, the same might not happen at other times when the children end up manifesting these abilities later in life. This difference in the Compound V's effects is evident in the case of both Starlight and the Deep. Starlight had her powers ever since she was a toddler, but then the Deep started exhibiting his Aquaman-like powers at the age of 9 years. We even witnessed Marie Moreau manifesting her superpowers at 10, when she had her first period. Stephen King fans might notice that this is very similar to how Carrie came to terms with her powers in the book, as she also had her period for the first time when she used her telekinesis powers. Did the writers get influenced by the master of horror himself? It wouldn't be surprising, considering King has given us quite a few interesting superpowered beings in literature. How do soups get different powers? There needs to be a clear indication of the prediction parameter to decide which soup gets what powers. But then, it's purely genetics, according to the comics, that determine what sort of abilities an individual manifests as their superhero ability. Another exciting plot detail provided by the creator of the series, Eric Kripke himself, indicates that the dosage determines the strength of the powers of the soups. A particular individual is often given a higher dosage of Compound V to make them strong, and this was the case for both Queen Maeve and Homelander. At the same time, Beings with lesser abilities were given lower dosages. It becomes evident that this disparity intentionally created a balance between the superheroes. Vought International put a lot of thought into this, and one of the clear examples of this dosage for strength was seen in the case of Golden Boy. Golden Boy was already one of the primary soups at Goldoken University. But then there was the intended plan to make him a lot stronger. To do this, he was made to undergo blood transfusions without his knowledge, so that his physical strength could be improved. But these transfusions were done with Compound V and his brother Sam's blood. After all, there was a solid political reason behind each. Another aspect to consider when discussing the idea of different powers is that superheroes related to each other have similar powers. Polarity and his son Andre have the same powers, while Translucent and his son Maverick also had some. This detail further proves that the kind of superpower an individual acquires depends on the individual's genetic makeup. Oh 
How different are superpowers? This is a question that fans have been wondering about for quite a while now. With several superhero worlds having various powers, how different could their powers be? The boys introduced us to an exciting variety that is very similar to DC's Justice League, and that makes sense because they're making fun of that genre. Fans might have noticed that Homelander is identical to Superman, and he can be considered the perfect example of a scenario where Superman turns evil. Queen Maeve's character design and other aspects pit her very close to Wonder Woman, even though Maeve doesn't have any of the mythological lore that Wonder Woman does. Even their powers are very similar in terms of superhuman strength and other aspects. It wouldn't be a world of superheroes if we didn't have a fast runner, and A-Train fills that role perfectly, but with his usual messed up renditions that work at par with the boys. But then A-Train is not the only speedster in this world. We also see Shockwave, who later takes on the A-Train's role in the Seven until he's killed. Like the other Justice League counterparts, we have the Deep, a messed up version of Aquaman. There was a joke about Aquaman sleeping with fish, but the Deep does have a thing for aquatic creatures. DC fans probably didn't like this parody, and the creators made the Deep blonde. We also have the character of Translucent, who also turns out to be the very first victim of the boys. Even though he has a cool superpower of being invisible, he's probably the most disturbing part of the Seven. Now that we're done with the apparent superheroes, let's jump into the characters whose superpowers bring out the wild world of the boys. Stormfront, the very first of the soups, has crazy healing abilities, and she can withstand a lot of force while being able to shoot lightning from her hands with varied intensities. Then we have Soldier Boy, who has an exciting ability that we'll discuss soon in response to another question that fans have regarding the soups. Now, Soldier Boy has super strength and can withstand any physical or chemical attack. He also ages slowly and wakes up after a long time, so fans might have noticed Captain America has terrible terrible aspects of the character. Starlight and Kimiko are unique additions to the world of superheroes, exhibiting powers uncommon among other superheroes from the comics. Starlight has super strength and can create electric sparks to incapacitate her opponents. Her skin can withstand strong attacks, and a crystal saw is required to get through it. On the other hand, Kimiko, who was part of the experimentations intended to create super terrorists, has enhanced agility and strength. She has the vibe of Wolverine's daughter with healing capabilities, but doesn't have blades to use against her enemies. But that's okay okay because she can rip out people's throats in seconds and severely injure her enemies when required. Fans were surprised to see Sean Ashmore appear in the series with the powers of controlling fire, which is quite the opposite of his powers in the X-Men, where he controls ice. It's a nice little treat from the series makers. Victoria Newman is also an interesting character whose powers came as an absolute shock because it was never revealed that she was a soup. Newman can make another person's body explode, and she tends to target the head more often. Yes, you don't want to mess with her because she won't take a second chance before she kills you off by making your head explode. But another character remained an absolute mystery till the end, and is somehow making a comeback in the upcoming series season. Black Noir has been shown as some sort of mix between Batman and some other crazy superhero because he remains mysterious while being able to tolerate crazy levels of pain. The mystery works because he strikes fear in the enemy when he arrives on the scene. Now that we're done with most of the characters who appeared in The Boys, let's jump into the soups and their crazy powers. From The Boys spin-off series Gen V, we have Marie Moreau, who will probably team up with The Boys. She can control blood blood, which doesn't only mean blood flow, but she can also use blood to attack her opponents. Then there's Kate Dunlap, who appears next to the Seven in the trailer for the upcoming season. She can manipulate people using their emotions and erase specific memories, but the coolest among them was Jordan Lee, a gender-fluid soup who can switch between genders as required. The cool thing is that they have different powers in the two personalities. In the female form, they can produce blasts from their hands and push off other people, while at the same time the male form can withstand heavy attacks and other damage. They were ranked next to Golden Boy, one of the strongest beings at Goldolkin University. If we're talking about the characters from Gen V, we cannot miss Emma Meyer, who can change her body size as per requirement. But the only thing is that she needs to eat a lot to grow in size and then throw up to get small. It has an exciting range of powers that are not heavily derived from other superheroes we've seen in different comic book worlds. However, one of the significant superpowers shared among most of these characters is the ability to fly. Almost all the soups can fly, and there might be some sort of particular focus that Vought might have put into the compound for this ability. Sorry, Jubilee. Another group of superheroes where most can fly. He's mine. Get your hands off of her! Can the soup's power be transferred to their kids or relatives? As we've already discussed, the superpowers are similar in terms of siblings or other family aspects. Fans might have noticed that Ryan Butcher has powers very similar to Homelander, and he even tries to force him to fly by pushing him off the roof of his house. This similarity is purely because of the similar genetic material of the two individuals who have the powers. Polarity and his son Andre in Gen V are shown to have the same powers because they have the same genetic structure. Ryan having powers was something that Vought somewhat expected because they managed to indicate 
indicate that Ryan and Becca were kept hidden from both Billy and Homelander. Since Ryan was Homelander's child, he would have powers similar to his father's, and thus, Vought kept him as another of their test subjects. They probably wanted a Homelander 2.0, but with a little bit more humanity than they had been able to instill in Homelander. So yes, it seems that these powers can be transferred to the kids of Supes. Siblings do seem to have similar powers, and that will probably be something we might witness in the series narrative shortly. Do all soups have similar powers? Some of the soups' abilities are similar, while others are unique to a specific soup. Some skills, like super strength, the ability to fly, and the ability to heal are widespread. Some soups combine all these abilities and become as epic as Homelander himself. The ones with the combination of powers are the ones on whom Vought invested more of the Compound V than usual. The powers might seem similar at times because they mainly involve something related to lightning. Still, there are differences when you see the ability to manipulate these energies. But yeah, the series has shown some exciting range regarding the individual's powers. It's not a superhero world if there isn't more than one speedster after all. Marvel and DC have a billion of them. Can all the soups handle their powers? One of the significant questions that arises with this wide variety of powers is whether these individuals can handle the powers that they possess. It might be challenging to come to terms with the powers if it isn't a controlled environment, and they might have to lash out, which could end up injuring people around them. But then, these powers definitely won't injure the individuals themselves, as very few of the soups have been known to do so. Kate Dunlap uses her powers of control quite often, but using it too often can make her bleed through her nose and turn her eyes bloodshot. This indicates a risk involved with the their powers, and one can see that in the case of Polarity and his son Andre. Both of them risked brain damage when they used their powers, and Polarity even started having seizures, which led to him losing his powers. One of the only times we actually see a soup killing themselves was in Sage Grove, where one of them was killed by their acid vomit, because the skin did not bear the ability to withstand acid like the stomach. Can they reproduce? The soups can reproduce, but that doesn't mean that their offspring will bear the powers and abilities of the parent. Only one case has been seen where the offspring inherited the father's powers, which was the case of Ryan Butcher. Ryan inherited the powers, and of course, Vought considered this a significant success and tried to hide him, as we explained. Other cases of children having powers similar to their parents are primarily because they were also administered Compound V, and had an identical genetic code that allowed for similar powers. Do they all have the same weakness? Vaught International is a well-planned organization, and it won't be surprising to see that they did plan some means of putting the soups down when a particular situation arises. We witnessed the boys doing extensive research to identify a possible weakness for each of the soups so that they could kill them. Over time, we did get a chance to discover their shortcomings, with the very first amongst them being Translucent, who was killed by a bomb that was placed inside of him, as his insides weren't impenetrable like the outside. And also, one of his significant weaknesses was electricity in a rather unique manner. However, Jin V introduced a whole new concept, a common weakness for all the soups, an auditory one. Even though it's used in the series, we hear two guards talk about it, mentioning that those individuals who have been administered the Compound V injections also have manifested a sensitivity to higher frequencies. While it might have come as an absolute surprise, this was mentioned in a particular manner in The Boys when the group was trying to get a hold of Ryan by distracting Homelander. Wireless speakers were placed that blasted loud noise, which showed that Ryan was in pain and Homelander was also somewhat affected by the noise. This detail might indicate that adult soups are not as affected by the noise as younger ones, and that's why the soups at Goldolkin University are also affected by the sound. Now, do you remember those neck braces that we used to see in X-Men? They were used to turn off the mutant's powers. The boys have also introduced a means of permanently getting rid of soups' powers. In the third season of The Boys, we notice that Soldier Boy launches a radioactive blast that can prove very strong for his opponent. We witnessed a particular example of the effect of this power when Soldier Boy blasted a building, but later it seemed that the blast could also burn the V out of the bloodstream of the soup. This removal depowers the soup, which was seen in both the cases of Kimiko and Queen Maeve, who lost their powers, so Soldier Boy could be quite the weapon against the soups, if he could be brought under control. Marvelous verdict. Some questions still need to be answered, and many exciting questions might develop once the new season premieres on Amazon Prime. We'll finally get to see the characters from Gen V appear in the series, and at the same time, Negan will also make an appearance as what seems to be an essential character. Meanwhile, if you have any other questions or think you know the answers to one of them, put them in the comment section. The rest of us can review everything about the boys so that we don't skip the details from the latest season. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!